Welcome to Netec Engineering. Today we are doing statics, engineering science and four. Subscribe to this channel so that you receive more videos like this. Click that notification button so that you are notified every time we drop a new video. We are already familiar with beams. As far as beams are concerned, we know how to calculate for directions. We know how to draw the Schaeffer's diagram. In N4, nothing is changing. We are only adding what we call the bending moment diagram. This is my beam of a length 10 meters. I have already calculated the reactions just to save time. Now, the question they say, calculate for the reactions, which we have already did. Draw the Schaeffer's diagram and draw the bending moment diagram, which is what we will focus on on this section. First, we know how to draw the Schaeffer's diagram. We will have to project this starting from this zero line. It's 24 and it's going up. We go up by 24. Next force, it's 10 and it's going down. This 24. It's 10 and it's going down, which will be 14. From here, we have 20. And 20 is going down as well, which will give us negative 6. From here, we are also going down by 20, which will give us 26. And we will have this 26 going up back to the zero line. And this is our shear force diagram. Here will be negative 26, negative 26. This is our Schaeffer's diagram. And now the next step is for us to draw the bending moment diagram. For us to be able to draw the bending moment diagram, first we have to calculate for the values on each and every point of importance on our beam, which is the point, are the points where a force is acting on, on our beam. We name them A, B, C, D, and E. We have to get the values of the bending moment diagram at each and every point where a force is acting on the beam. We have to get the, 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 value, the value at A, at B, at C, at D, and at E, so that we are able to get our, to draw our bending moment diagram. We are dealing with moments. We know that a moment is the product of a force times the distance. And it as a unit is given by newtons times meters. Now, for us to be able to calculate the moment at this point, we will take the point first, we will calculate for A. We are at A. We want to get the values of the bending moment. First, we must choose whether we are going to use the left hand, the, the right hand side or the left hand side. But no matter which side you choose to use, your answer must be the same. So with this A, we are going to use the right hand side we said a moment is the product of the force times the distance we say first this force is 10 newtons 10 newtons what's the distance between a and b where the 10 newtons is the 10 kilonewtons is acting is the distance is 2 which direction is the force acting on. The force is going down. When a force is going down, the sign is going to be negative. The sign is to be taken into consideration when we are calculating for the bending for the values of the bending moment diagram. Now we are done with this force. We move to the next force. What is the value of the force acting at C? 
as 20 times what's the distance between C and A? It's this 2 plus this 3, which gives us 5. It will be times 5. In which direction is the 20 kilonewtons applied? It's going down. Therefore, it's a negative. We are done with that force. We go to the next force acting at point D. We say, first, it is going down. It's a negative. What's the magnitude? It's 20. What's the distance between A and D? It's 2, 3, which would give us 5, plus 2, and it's a 7. We are done with this force. We move to the next force. We will say, what's the magnitude? It's 26. What's the distance? 2 and 3 will give us 5. 2 and 3 will give us 5, which is a 10. Direction, it is going up. Therefore, it's a positive. And now we are going to get our answer. The reason why we are not including this force is because it will be 24 and the distance between this and that because it's acting directly at point A it will be a 0 therefore it will give us 0 so we can just eliminate it from our equation so we are only focusing in these ones when we punch the calculate we will get that our answer is 0 kilonewtons times meter this will be our value of the bending moment at A. What does that tell us? Remember I said, when we are calculating for the value of a bending moment, we choose a side. We are at A, and we chose to go with the right-hand side. We got that our answer is zero. I said, no matter which side you choose to use, your answer must be the same. Let's say now we choose to use the, the left-hand side. We can clearly see that there are no forces on the left-hand side of A, which tells us that the bending moment, if we were to look at the left-hand side, we, we will clearly see that our answer will be zero. So whenever you are calculating for the bending moment, for the values of the bending moment diagram, the bending moment at A and the bending moment at E will always be zero. So we can conclude to say the bending moment, uh, the value of the bending moment at E is also zero kilo newtons times meters. Why? Because there are no forces on the right hand side of E. So even if we go about calculating for the bending moment, for the value of the bending moment at E using this side, we are going to get zero as well. So now at E and at A, our values is zero. Now we want to get the bending moment, the value of the bending moment at B. We choose one side. We will choose the side which is less complex. Looking at this diagram, this side will have one, two, three forces. But if we choose to calculate for the bending moment diagram, for the values of the bending moment diagram using this side, that will be less of a pain to us because on this side we only have one force. So we can just say what's the force? It's 24. Magnitude times what is the distance? It's 2. What's the direction? It's positive because it's going up. 24 times 2 is 20, it's 48 kilonewtons times meters. And I will erase this. We go to C. MC is equal to. At C, we have equal number of forces both sides. So with this one, you can choose uh, which side you want to work with. I have calculated for the, um, value, for the value of the pending moment using the right hand side which will be what's the 
the magnitude of the force acting at D is 20. The distance between C and D is 2. What's the direction of the force? It's going down and then it's minus. We are done. We, go to, we come to this one. Direction is positive. Magnitude is 26. Distance is 5. Which will give us an answer of 90 kilonewton times meter. We are to calculate for this one now. The bending moment, the value of the bending moment at D. We will use this side since it's the less complex. We will just say 26, which is the magnitude. The direction is positive and because it's going up. And the distance between D and E is 3, which will give us an answer of 78. 78 kilonewtons per times meter. And these are our values. I will erase this and write this here. It's MD is equals to 26 times 3, which give us 28 kilonewtons times meters. And now we come to just below our Sheffield diagram. That's where we are going to get to draw our bending moment diagram. At E, we already know it's zero. At A, we already know it's zero. At B, this is B. It's 48. Let's say 48 is here. It's B, 48. At C, C, it's 90. 90, let's say 90 is here. This is 90. And at D, it's 78. Then we join these lines, these points, using a straight line. And that is our bending moment diagram for a beam that only has point low. And that is how you go about calculating for the values and drawing the diagram, which is the bending moment diagram. And this is the format that, that you must present your answers. First, start with the beam. Just below the beam is the Sheffield's diagram. And then just be, be below the Sheffield's diagram, that's where you are going to draw the bending moment diagram. And this is a bending moment diagram of a beam that only has point loads. On the next lesson, we are going to look at a bending moment diagram of a beam that has UTLs. See you on the next lesson.